Hi everyone, Andy at Trade Schools for you here. Put your hands up if you've ever had an electric shock. That's a question that I ask to all my new students and I'm always surprised at how many people put their hands up. So if you've just put your hand up, stay tuned. This video is for you because we're gonna safely isolate in this video a socket outlet, but it could be a lighting point, any point on the circuit. We're gonna isolate that so that we don't get electric shocks in the future. And then I'll show you how to isolate a whole installation at the consumer units. Let's have a look at some of the equipment that you're going to need here. Um, the main bit of equipment you're going to need is what's called an approved voltage indicator. Now, you can, you can use multimeters for measuring voltage, but they're not recommended for safely isolating a circuit because there's so many settings on here. You only need to be one click out and you're on the wrong setting. So we do not recommend multimeters for safe isolation. Uh, the beauty with this is it only measures voltage. Um, it must conform to guidance note GS38. Now you can look that up, but essentially what that says is that a meter that is being used for testing live voltage is above 50 volts really. Um, the tips mustn't exceed four millimeters, preferably two millimeters. There should be finger guards uh, that stop your fingers from sliding forward onto a live terminal. And GS38 says that you must check the casing and you must check the cable of the meter so it's not damaged or broken before you do any live testing. Now, you've got to make sure that your meter is working for obvious reasons. If you're measuring voltage, you want to make sure that your meter is working. And so therefore you have to prove that it's working. And this particular QTEC uh, AVI, Approved Voltage Indicator, has got its own proving unit. You just touch the tips together and all the lights come on, let you see that it's working. Now, if your approved voltage indicator doesn't have that, then you're going to need one of these. This is called a proving unit. And this is the QTEC one. And with this one, I don't know if you'll be able to see all the lights. I'll leave it there. You may be able to see that, but you'll see them on here. What you do is you test your meter by going in there and all the lights will come on. And then QTEC tells us to keep the, um, the instrument in contact with the proving unit until all the lights have gone off and then you know that it's working. So that's what I'm going to be using. Uh, but just a, a quick word on some other things here. Um, you might recognize with the colors of this, a famous manufacturer. This is my voltage stick and um, it's a bit battered and bruised now because it's had seen a lot of use. Um, but I just wanted to show it you. It flashes on and off like that. That's its proving unit. And this is the non-contact device. So for a, a quick check of a cable, it's ideal. Um, look at that. You find the live cable, it glows red and emits an audible alarm. So you can detect, you can even use it in sockets to detect whether the socket is on or off. So a very useful piece of equipment for a quick test. Just turn that off. Uh, you'll need a lock-off kit when you're doing safe isolation. This is to ensure that you can lock off the circuit and nobody else can switch it on. Um, okay, and I'm just going to show you this plug-in tester. These are ideal. You need to get one of these for your toolkit. Uh, there's three lights on it and depending on how it lights up, it will detect a fault within a socket circuit and let you know what that fault is. I'm going to use it to identify the circuit that we're going to work on. So where this really comes in useful is identifying a circuit. Now it's not always convenient to completely switch off the whole installation when we just need to work on one circuit. Um, it might inconvenience the client. So we, we need to identify the circuit. So before we ever turn anything off, we must check with the client that we're about to do this because I need to identify what that circuit is. And it's not always clear from a consumer unit labeling so I'm going to put that in and I'm going to turn it on and I'm now going to find the circuit. Now that's is a, this is a radial circuit so I'm looking for a 16 or a 20 amp circuit breaker. So I've got one here, nope, put that back on. I've got a 16 here, it's not that one. 
And I've got a 20 amp here, I'm gonna try that. Nope. So 16, yeah, there we go. Now, sometimes you can actually hear that when you're at the consumer unit, so you know that you've found the circuit. If it's a long way away, you're going to have to just keep going backwards and forwards unless you've got somebody with you. But now that I've identified the circuit, I'm now going to lock it off using the lock-off kit. The 18th edition consumer units, these metal ones, uh, the flap is always falling down, so it's incredibly difficult to uh, work on the, the, the circuit breakers to isolate them. So. This is not for sticking over the circuit breaker to isolate it. I'm just going to rip some tape off to hold the cover up while I get the, the lock off kit on. So just a bit of tape on there and then there we go. It's just to hold it in position while I get the lock off kit on. So let's get the lock off kit. These come in various shapes and sizes, so you might need a few different ones in, in, your, in your toolbox. But this is going to clip just behind the circuit breaker there. If I get it in the right position. It can be a little bit fiddly. You've got to sometimes play around with it. There we go. And then that clips down, like so. And I'm using a padlock and key and my label. So that's going through there. And the label is going on there. And I'm going to secure that now. Like so. It's very, very important you don't leave that key lying around. You don't want somebody undoing that lock and turning that circuit on while you're working on it. So you always keep the key on your person. So it's going in my pocket. Right, I'll take the tape off now because I'm going to walk away from this board and um, I'm now going to go over to the socket and we'll look at how to check for, uh, for dead, as we say, in the socket. I've loosened the socket. Now, of course, that could be just changing this socket for a new one. It could be broken. It might not be working. So I've undone the screws. Get that one out there. And I've just got to check now. I'm pretty sure that there's no voltage present here, but this is what we're going to test for. So carefully bring the socket down. Let's prove that our meter is working. So all the lights are coming on. There we go. And the way to do this now is that we're going to go on to the CPC first. It's always a good idea to go onto your CPC first first because there shouldn't be any voltage there and then I'm going to test to the line conductor and I shouldn't get any reading. There we go, nothing happening, that's good. I'm going to stay on the earth and I'm going to move to the neutral. Nothing happening there, so earth to line, earth to neutral and then finally move across, neutral to line, Nothing happening at all. And if you notice with that sequence, I always had one probe in contact every time. So just to repeat that, look, earth to line or CPC to line. Keep it on the CPC and move to the neutral. Keep that probe on the neutral while you move to the line. You've done all three tests and now the most important oh, is my meter may have broken just then and that could still be live and the only way I can prove that those readings were genuine is to reprove the meter. Unfortunately this one needs a little bit of time to reset itself once you've been doing it so let's just check that again. There we go. All the lights have come on. If I was in any doubt I could always go back to my proving unit and just double check on there. I shan't wait for the lights to count because we've seen that happening, but I know now that my meter is okay. So I can safely assume now that there is no voltage present and I'm now safe to work on that socket. So we've seen how to safely isolate part of a circuit, in that case, a socket. Now, what if you have to work inside the consumer unit? And so you've got to take the front of the, the board off. Um, we might want to be putting a new circuit in or whatever. So we need to isolate the whole installation. So once again, you must obtain permission from the client 
And what we're going to do now is we're going to de-energize the installation bit by bit. We're going to shed the load as it's called. So you never just turn the main switch off. You turn everything off bit by bit. Turn the RCD off by pressing the test button. And then when you've shed the load, when you've turned all the loads off in the installation, you can then do the main switch. And as before, we now need to lock off that main switch. So we get our lock off kit. And fasten that on there. Again. Put the label on, fasten that on, and remember the key goes in your pocket. Now I can take the cover off the board, so let's get the screws off. I'm going to need to remove the tape while I get the cover off the front here. So there we go. So here are my incoming tails. Now this is just a test board in the real world. These tails would be uh, 25 millimeters at least. And to prove that the installation is actually locked off, I'm going to need to test from the output side of the main switch. So this bus bar cover now needs to come off. So just be careful because at this point we haven't actually checked that everything is dead and there's no voltage anywhere. Right, let's uh, prove my meter. So there we go, all my lights are coming on, I know it's working. And as before, with the socket, we're going to go on to the earth terminal where all the CPCs and the main earth and the bonding could be connected. And we're going to the output side. I don't know if you can see that. Let me just move the label. Put the label away just so that you can see where I'm going. So, onto the earth terminal. You can go anywhere on here. It's all just one big, huge block. And I'm going, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going onto the line conductor at the bottom of the switch and nothing is lighting up, which I'm happy about. Now, if that lit up, there would be a problem and you must stop work immediately. But that's okay. So earth to line, move across, earth to neutral, and then come on down next to that line to neutral. Nothing has lit up, that's great. Let me just pull that label back down. Uh, as I'm at the, um, as I've got a live supply here, I can reprove my meter on the incoming tails, like so. So I know that my meter is working. Everything is now dead. I'm safe to go ahead. I hope this video has been of some use to you. Um, if so, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.